Hey everyone, Daniel from VoiceFlow. Uh, I'm going to show you how we're using GPT to moderate our Discord uh, and actually answer questions based on all of our knowledge base uh, through VoiceFlow. So you can see here that uh, if you ask a question, it actually creates a thread and responds. And so if you check our general channel down here, uh, that's always super chaotic. We've got thousands of people in here. You can see that people are asking questions at all points of the day. Now we can't get to all of these. And so what we did was we built an assistant that's actually able to listen, create a thread and answer questions. So this one says, hey, I want to know how I put AI to my client's chatbot. The assistant was able to respond immediately, walk them through it and actually provide a source. Say over here, hey, what can I do if I don't both those have the languages that I need? You can see that I did the same thing. And so now I'll kind of show you how it generally works. So I've got a test channel here. If I do something like, how do I purchase more tokens? You can see that the thread is immediately created. VoiceFlow is able to actually look at the question and provide a pretty detailed answer on how I can do this and actually link me the article uh, that could help answer my question. So to walk you a bit through what the VoiceFlow project looks like, and then what we're going to do is we're going to jump into tutorial with Nico, who's actually built out the custom connector here. And fair warning, this is intended for developers. So if you are a developer, this will be something that you'll be able to do. We've got all the repos for you. If you aren't a developer, I'd recommend looking at maybe other tools that might be able to do this easier. But if you're a developer, VoiceFlow gives you a ton of flexibility to kind of handle all these things in any way that you This is how the uh, integration works. So you've got your message that's sent in Discord in a channel. That message is then sent to VoiceFlow through the connector that Nico's built uh, and he's going to walk through. Once VoiceFlow receives the message, it provides an answer from the knowledge base, sends that back to the connector, the connector that creates a thread and attaches the answer to that thread in Discord. And this all happens within a matter of a couple seconds. And so in VoiceFlow, um, this is where our information lives within the knowledge base. And you can see here that it's got a ton of documentation from our help docs, from our dev docs, all these other places. And Nico's got tutorials on how to automatically load these in from Zendesk and other sources. Now, that's all for the high-level overview. Now we're going to jump to uh, Nico. He's going to walk through the repo that he's created here in our GitHub. He's going to show you how this works and how to actually start setting it up and where to find all the information you need in the environments file and other sources. Hey, Nico from VoiceFlow here. In this video, we will talk about the live answer for the Discord. So let's dive in. The first thing is, obviously, you want to clone the repository. You should have something that will look like this with the a template for the environment file. And we can actually, we can start by copying this, pasting it and rename to .env. And we will start populating this. And uh, as well, I, I will explain what each of those are meant for. The VoiceFlow API URL. So this is the main URL endpoint. You can't use a local endpoint here. You want to be sure to target the existing one, the VoiceFlow one. The VoiceFlow API key is the API key you can get from the, the integration panel in VoiceFlow. The version ID, so the version ID are used to run the specific version. Whenever you are interacting with your VoiceFlow assistant and the dialog API, you want to be sure to target the current version. In, in VoiceFlow, you might have a multiple version. If you want to use names, those two options are development and production. Um, the project ID is another information you can get from within the creator app. And you can, you can use or set a value here. It's just only needed if you want to save transcript because the transcript API need a project ID to work. So if you don't set anything in there, we will not save the transcript. This part is about your Discord bot. So app ID, server ID, and Discord token. All those information are available on the dev portal, Discord dev portal. And, and this is also documented in the readme. So just, yeah, have a look at the readme file. We have a documentation here to explain how you can get those value. And we will, I will populate this as well in the video. So you might 
have also a better understanding of how to get those and where to get those information. And lastly, live, uh, live answers channels and threads are only for the live answer feature or this, this example. Here you want to sp specify which Discord channel on your Discord server, which channel you want this live answer feature to be available. Meaning that if you have multiple channels, because the way this is working is basically each time a user will type a message, we will send it to the dialog API, to your voice flow assistant. So most of the time, you don't want all the message. You want only get those that are coming from an FAQ channel, because the main goal here is to use your knowledge base to generate answers for the user automatically. And threads settings is, do you want the answer to be a thread or do you want the bot to just reply to the user? So let's, let's start with the, with the Discord bot setup. I've already created a bot here. Again, you can find more information on how to do this in the readme file. What we need now for our .m file is the application ID. So I will copy that right there. Then the other thing is the server ID and the Discord token. So while we are here, let's go to the, <clears throat> sorry, to the bot setting. And I'm going to create a new token. I need, let me just, okay, just verification here. So now we have a reset token. Uh, sorry, we have a token. We don't want to read that, that again, obviously. Um, you have to reset it to get access to it, to show the value. So in this step, be careful and be sure to copy this token. Otherwise, you will have to reset again. And when your bot is live, it means that you will need to change it in your integration code if whenever you reset that token. So let's copy it and pass it right there, Discord token. So now we also need the server ID. The server ID is on the Discord app. You can get this by uh, clicking, let me move this a bit. So on your server, you can do a right click, copy server ID. If you don't have this, you want to go to settings. This is in advanced and you want to toggle on the developer mode. So here, copy server ID. So I'm targeting this server server ID. And now this will be, oh, we, we can set up the uh, live answers channel thing here. You can see that my bot has already been added. Again, check the readme. You have a step-by-step -step guide on how to add your bot to, to your Discord server. It's not online because we're not reading the app here. But what we can do already is say, okay, this is the general channel. We don't want live answer to run on this. This is a test channel and this is the one I want this feature to run on. So I will copy the channel ID and pass it there. If I have multiple channels, I want to use the live answer feature on. I can just add a comma and add a bunch of other channel ID. In my case, and in this demo, we will just run this on the test channel. So this is the corresponding ID. So all this part, mostly the, the Discord part is set up. What we need here is the VoiceFlow API key from our project, our VoiceFlow assistant. We also need a project ID. Okay, so let's create a new voice flow assistant so we can get those 
those values. I'm on a brand new web chat assistant and we need, so in the settings, you have access to the project ID and the version ID. Here, we need the project ID. So let's grab this, paste it there. The version ID, we are going to use the development version. The development version is whenever you are making some changes and hit the play button, this will create a new dev version or updates the uh, existing dev version versus the production version is whenever you hit the publish button. As soon as you hit the publish version, you have a, a production version available. And obviously you can publish a production version, run a production version, but keep working or updating your assistant, testing it without touching the actual production version, which is a good way to keep working, updating, testing changes before pushing them to production. What we need here is also in the integration pan, we want to go to the dialog API and copy the API key. And we can pass it right there. So here we go. Dot M5 uh, is set up. And uh, now we will need to create that live answer flow for this. And again, to give you more context, let's check the. Uh, so this is a, a very light version of our main Discord integration example. And here, what we are doing is sending whenever, so let me go to messages. Yeah, that's the message create.js. As you can see, the only event we are looking for a message. So this part is just to say, if a message is coming from a bot, just ignore that. We don't want to answer a bot. This part is if in the live answer channel right there, or if the actual channel ID from which the message is coming is included in this, then you can keep going and do this. So basically, if this is coming, if the message is coming from a channel that we've just whitelisted here, then we can use the live answer feature. So we are setting a bunch of a variable here. We are grabbing the message. We are removing any mention or tags in that message. So just filtering the content here. And then we are sending this to our voice, the, our voice flow assistant by using the dialog API. So the interact function here is a custom function that use dialog API. And in there, we are sending the message, the author ID, and a bunch of other uh, settings, but I will not go over this. We have two videos regarding the, the main Discord integration. This is not something you, you want to worry about here. So we are, we, we know, how to unbold those messages and filter those. If they are coming from a channel, we are allowing to do so. So now we want to go to the dialog api.js and check right there how we are handling the, the in the interact function, this live answer. And this is right there. If is live, so from from what we are, set, we are sending from message crate, we have that is live set to true. Then we are sending this payload to the dialog API. And as you can see, we are sending an intent with a name, live 
underscore answer and a query. And in that case, the query is the message from the user. So this is sent to the dialog API function. And the dialog API function is just, again, an interface with the dialog API where we are using the actual dialog API endpoint, interact the action. So this is a, the payload we've just created right there. So we are sending an intent with the live underscore answer name and the message. And uh, yeah, and uh, now we are getting back some trace. And if it is a text, do this. If it's an image or a choice or, or a button, do that. And yeah, visual, if, it's, if the conversation is ending or not. And this is basically where we are uh, also saving uh, transcripts. So if you've set a project ID in there, sorry, a version ID in there. No, actually, no, this is the project ID, sorry. So if you set the project ID, again, this is documented in the readme, but if you've set the project ID and the conversation is ending, we will use the save transcript function. So the save transcript function use our transcript API and save the, the actual conversation. And as you can see, we are checking if we have a project ID or not. If we don't have a project ID, we are just not saving the transcript. Okay, so now that you have a better understanding of this code, you also know that we need to create a specific intent or you create your own intent in your voice role assistant and you change the name here or you keep this name and you create an intent in your voice for assistant with this name. So in that case, or for the demo, I will stick with this name. And, and uh, yeah, let's, let me show you how you can create this. So this is the home flow, but we're not really using or interacting with the, the voice for assistant that way. So we are not just having a full conversation. We are sending an information and want want a response in return. So a good way of doing this is let's create a topic. I'll call this live answer. Uh, you can call that or use the name you want here. What we want to be sure here is to use the live underscore answer because for the entity name, because this is what this is the name we are using in our code here. So if you, you change this, be sure that again, this is the actual name of your, of your intent here. And that's, that's all we need. We don't need utterances. We are triggering this live underscore answer intent with the dialogue API. So we don't, we don't need utterance in, in there to trigger that intent. And this is where we can start testing. So here, if I choose to say hello, I can use a, just a stack, uh, text step here. And, and this is what the user will get back whenever they type a message. So let's try this. Uh, you need to run this each time, or you, your assistant, each time you make uh, an update, uh -huh. otherwise the version uh -huh. will not be updated. And uh, because in the environment we are using the development version, we are not go we are not going to use uh, this this version, so the, the the one we are working on right there. So let's give it a try. NPM start. This will install all the dependencies and and run the app. So. You can see we are logging in as the bot name here and we are ready. So let's go right here. Now the, the bot is live. So if I say something here, nothing will happen. 
simply because we are not targeting this channel. I've only added the this channel ID here. So live answer channel. I want my live answer feature to work on test channel. So now if I say test, you can see that something has been triggered here because we've passed all the condition. This is a message from the user, not a bot. This is in an allowed, allowed channel. We have a project ID, so we are also saving the transcript. And we are triggering the live answer intent. So we are returning the hello text as a thread because thread are set to true. So if I want to set that to false and restart, I can do the same thing Hi again, but this time we will get a response in this format, not just a reply to the, uh, the user message instead of a thread. So let's put that back in. Um, so it works, but what we want to do now is use a knowledge base to answer user questions. So let's add some source. And uh, what we can do is use, actually, let's use the sitemap. So I will use the <clears throat> voice flow sitemap, enter, and I can get, actually, let's, we don't need all this. Let's stick to you for this demo. Let's stick to those. Yeah, should be good. All right, add URL. So you can see we start adding and fetching the information from those URL to our knowledge base. And while this is running, we can go back here and instead replace the text step to a response using the knowledge base. Okay. So <clears throat> what we want here is to know the, because so far, we were basically ignoring this. Sorry, the user message. Hi again. We're, we were not using it. We were just sending back the hello message. So what we want, of course, is having access to that information so we can use it as a question to use on our knowledge base. And if you remember here, Dialog API, we are sending this as a query for our intent. So the value here will be available in the last utterance uh, variable. So here, if I use last utterance, this is the last message we got from the user. And we can use this to query our knowledge base. So let's see where we are. Okay, looks good. Let's do a quick test. Tell me more about voice flow, generating a response in the preview. And voice flow is a platform for building conversation AI. Okay, we have the source here coming from about page. We're good. So, you can also do a preview here. Same thing here. Tell me more about voice flow. But we, as we are using yet, yeah, voice flow is a platform for building. So we have the response right there. Okay. So now, instead of just returning 
uh, a simple hello or text message. We are using our knowledge base with the user query or message from Discord. And we are sending back a response. So let's, let's test that. Before, be sure to run your assistant at least once to, again, update the development version. You don't need to restart the app whenever you change or update your version. It, because each time we are dealing with the dialogue API, we are fetching the, the correct development version. So the, the, even the, the updated uh, version in our case. So let's try this. Tell me more about voice. Well, so we can see user message. Tell me more about voice flow. We are. And we are using our knowledge base to generate this answer and we are sending it back in, in the response. And this is a, a reply because I've made a change here, but I, I haven't restarted the app. Unlike for with our assistant in voice flow, whenever you make uh, a change in your code or in the dot M file, obviously you want to be sure to restart your app. So let's do this. And now I can say something like, do you have a free plan? And same thing again, we are pinging our knowledge base and getting a response, but this time in it instead. Do you have a free plan? Yes, voice was a free plan called Sandbox, including a single editor. Yeah, so we have all the, the information here and that that will end this video. Hopefully you have a, a better understanding of how you can use this live answer feature. The main thing here is be sure to set all those value correctly. Be sure to run your assistant at least once each time you made some changes or you choose to update it. If you are using the code we are sharing, you want to create the live underscore answer intent and the link your, whatever your step you want to do, if you want to not using a knowledge base, but instead LLM or AI response to do a quick chat, that's also an option. So yeah, be sure to, to use the, the correct name or to change this name right there in the uh, dialog api.js. But obviously, again, this is just a, uh, an example. So it's not, it, it's not meant to run on production. If you want to do so, um, you will most likely uh, have to or want to uh, tweak that to uh, fit your needs and, and update it with more options like in the the other example where we have comment, a DM, or you can tag, you can tag the bot and interact with it this way, or even responding with a ephemeral message instead, stuff like this. But in this case, as some user were struggling with setting that up, this is why I choose to make this very light version so they can at least test the uh, live answer feature and start understanding how it works to then, as soon as they uh, are ready for it, they can switch to a, a more complex code and, and, and try that. Again, that's all. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys and chat soon. Bye.